Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this smoke grenade. We're gonna use Typhlow for the physics simulation of the grenade and then Phoenix FD on top for the smoke simulation. So I already have the model imported in here. I got this from Turbo Squid and the link for it is in the description. As always, I'm working under unit setup, centimeters, one unit is one centimeter. And we're gonna go right ahead and create a tie flow. Open the editor and we're gonna say birth object. And actually when you launch a smoke grenade, you would pull the pin and then this top part would fall away. So I'm just gonna hide these two parts. So all we really need is this object here. And I'm gonna say pick and pick the grenade as our birth object. So now if I update, I need to go under display geometry and it's showing up as a tie flow particle. So I can hide the original grenade and all I'm left with is basically tie floor right now. Nothing really happens, so we need to give it some speed. So I'm gonna drag out a speed operator and say only on event entry. So it's gonna be given the speed only once. And I'm gonna set the magnitude to something like 25 centimeters. So now it's sort of going up, we're gonna say direction and then you can pick so maybe let's do particle x or maybe particle y so it's going this way and then we need to turn it into a physics object so it actually interacts with the ground so i'm gonna drag out a physics shape operator and put it under the speed so now what's happening is it's given a speed and it's also a physics object so as i move forward you can see that it's interacting with the default ground and it's sort of bouncing around. So I can play it and this is what we have. So what you can do is unhide all and just unhide the original grenade and raise it up. And then you can hide it again. So now Typhlo will start higher and we get some nicer bounce. So if you wanted just something super simple, just have a grenade maybe f like fly into the scene and then land on the ground, um, you could just do this. And as far as the material goes, you can just open your grenade material and apply it straight to Typhlow and it'll update the grenade with the texture that it had previously. So everything's working the way it should. You can go under the physics shape settings under dynamics and you can play with the restitution. So restitution is basically bounce. So you can make it bounce a little more, so maybe something like 0.3. And then static and dynamic friction basically controls how much energy it loses when it hits an object or another particle. So in my example, I was going for an effect where I wanted it to sort of keep bouncing down the stairs. So I made it a little too bouncy but if I didn't, it would just sort of stay on the steps, so I needed to make it bouncier just to make it go all the way down. But essentially the friction would control how much energy it would lose every time it hits the stairs and it hits the wall. So if I were to make the friction very low, it might just bounce off the wall and just keep flying all the way. By raising the friction, it loses more and more energy every time it sort of hits the ground. So I'm gonna lower this a little bit just because I really like when it's sort of bouncing around and it makes the smoke simulation more interesting too. So right now we have something like this. Now one thing you can do to make sure that it interacts a little bit better is go under speed and say simulate substeps. So that'll help a little bit. And then when we have it hitting the wall, after we set the wall up, it's gonna hit the wall really fast. And if the particle is moving really, really fast, it might just fly right through the wall so what I ended up doing was go under the main tie flow settings under physics, and then you can raise the simulation substeps from four to six or eight. I ended up doing something like eight, but let's just do six for now and see how everything will look. So I'm pretty happy with the tie flow settings and with how this is bouncing around. So now it's completely up to you to create any kind of environment or like a hallway or a window for this to fly through. I'm just gonna show you how I made the stairs. So you can just go under the creation tab here and go under stairs. And I think I created an L type stair and you can just sort of drag that and then drag again and raise and you get these kinds of stairs. And then under the settings, you can say closed 
and that's pretty much what I did and then you can just go under standard and create a box and just sort of make a wall on each side and then you can just create a plane for the floor so you know where that is and we can just apply like a basic gray material to everything for now and now I would just sort of unhide the original can and you can put it in place to where you want it to be shot out of so I would put it maybe up here open the editor and set this so it's still set to Y so let's see where it ends up flying into okay so actually it's working fine now as you can see it's not interacting with the geometry and that's because we need to make these collision objects so I'm gonna drag out another birth object and let's add all of these as our new birth objects so I would just say pick and pick the stairs pick this wall this wall and the floor is actually in the exact same spot as the default floor so we can just leave that be and I'm gonna make that a physics shape as well so drag that out there and we can set this to type mesh so that it has all the detail so the way it's set up right now is basically all of these objects are being affected by gravity and they could fall over so we need to essentially disable them so I'm gonna do a physics switch and just set it to dynamic sleep so they are still dynamic objects and they will interact with our can but they will not be falling over so now if I slide this forward you can see that the can is interacting with the wall and with the stairs what you can do is maybe add some rotation to it the operators here and drag out a rotation and put it out here and you can just set it to random 3d and make sure the timing is on event entry only now what you can also do is unhide the original can and just sort of rotate it and this is how you will basically control the direction in which it's shooting so I can maybe rotate it to make it like go out here and what's fun is that it updates so fast that you can basically do this in real time so I can just rotate the can and rotate its position and you can see in real time where it will end up on the frame that you're at so I can go all the way to frame 100 and I can rotate this and it will update and I will see where it will end up on that last frame so I really wanted it to go all the way down the stairs so I like where it is right now so maybe we can make this more interesting by going back under speed and maybe let's make this 32 or some higher number to give it more speed you can always go under the physics shape settings for the wall and the stairs and mess with the friction here too so I would maybe make the restitution or the bounce maybe 0.3 so already it updated and you see that it bounces more and it's more likely to go down the stairs and keep going okay so I've been playing with the settings a little bit more I have 0.2 for bounce 0.5 0 0.5 0 and then for the can I did 0.3 and then the speed I'm at 32 so feel free to play around with this I just wanted it to go all the way down the stairs and it does so I really like this so let's move on to the Phoenix smoke sim so basically the issue is that yes you can use Typhlo as a direct emitter for Phoenix but then it would be emitting smoke out of the whole can so then you would have to maybe create a secondary emitter that only emits particles from the top part and use that as emitter for smoke in Phoenix but the easiest way that I found is just to export this as a separate geometry so I'm gonna go under export and drag out an export particles operator and put it here under display and set the export type to object and then you can just say export particles as objects say yes and ok and then you can go and select Typhlow and just hide it so basically what you're left with is this exported object which has all the keyframes and we can go under create Phoenix and create a standard fire and smoke sim you can click auto grid and just make a grid around the scene where the grenade is so something like this and now we need to create an emitter so I would just go back under standard create a cylinder and the smoke would be coming roughly from here so you can just make a cylinder right on top and don't move anything and just click link and link 
the cylinder to the grenade. So now they're moving together. And now we just need to make sure that the smoke will be coming only out of this top polygon. So we've done this a million times if you've been following my channel. So you can just make it an edible poly, select this top polygon like this and make it an ID, maybe 10 or some number that you'll remember. And then we need to go under helpers Phoenix and create a PHX source. And let's just add this cylinder as our source and make the ID 10. And let's enable motion velocity. So motion velocity is a really cool effect which will basically give the smoke speed based on the grenade. So instead of it just creating a trail, you can see up here that the smoke is moving toward the wall as if the grenade is creating this draft of wind that's pushing the smoke toward the wall. It's a really cool effect and you can emphasize it by making this value higher, but I think I did one, so that's that's good. Temperature, we can just do 400, which basically is neutral, so it will not really be going up or down. We're just going to control that with the buoyancy. And for the smoke, I think I did five because this really thick sort of smoke is what I was going after. And the outgoing velocity controls how much smoke is gonna come out of this, so I did 100. We can go under the Phoenix settings here. We can give it a little bit of resolution to start. Jammed minus on Z, so again the floor will act as the floor. And we can do adaptive grid enabled by smoke and give it a threshold of maybe 0.1. So whenever the grid senses that there's smoke of value higher than 0.1 it will extend the grid to accommodate the smoke so nothing will get clipped and then under dynamics i did smoke buoyancy 0.2 just a small value to make the smoke rise up just a little bit we can do large scale only like 0.3 and for the quality i would do something high maybe like 50 so the conservation quality ensures that all these plumes back here basically maintain their speed and their detail and that they will interact with the wall and everything properly. So the higher this number, the nicer the results throughout the lifespan of the smoke. And steps per frame, actually I did 8 steps per frame for the first 20 frames because that's when the grenade is the fastest and I really wanted to catch all that movement and the detail. And then after frame 20, I just lowered this to four, but I'm just gonna do four for now to make this tutorial go by quick. And then as always under output, just choose your output folder for the cache, enable velocity so you can render it with motion blur. And then we can go under rendering, volumetric options, smoke color, and change this to orange or whatever color you want. So that's already set up for us. And with everything in place, we can just hit start sim and see what happens. All right, so I'm running the sim and I had to raise the steps per frame all the way to 16. Even at steps per frame eight, it still wasn't catching the grenade and there just was no smoke until it slowed down. So if you're running into an issue where there's just no smoke, it's just because it's too fast and Phoenix is not catching up. So right now it's steps per frame 16 and it's doing a good job. So I'm gonna continue simming and I'll come back in a bit. All right, so I'm still running the same, everything is looking good. I lowered the steps per frame down to four now just to make it run faster. What you can do is go under rendering again. And I mean, actually preview and enable the GPU preview so you can see it pretty nicely. And then under rendering, volumetric options, smoke opacity, you can raise the opacity all the way up or almost all the way up just to get some really nice thick looking smoke um, that's entirely up to you and you can you know change the color and all that so I would say that I'm happy with how this is looking so I would just go back under grid raise the resolution just like I tell you guys in every tutorial after you're happy with how things are looking don't forget to raise the resolution and then run the sim again for some really nice detail and one more thing that you can do that I did and I think I did it too much because you know, I added some turbulence and I think toward the end it's getting broken up too much by the turbulence. It's getting kind of messy. I really like in the beginning when the plumes are sort of just these nice bubbles. But then toward the end it gets kind of, you know, too much, too crazy in here. So just some subtle turbulence would do. So you can do helpers, PHX turbulence 
and maybe do strength just like 10 and for the size you can do something like 50 or 70 and I'll just slowly introduce some movement to the smoke so it doesn't sort of end up stuck in place um, it'll make it just look a bit more interesting and detailed but be careful with this it is very powerful and it can uh, get very crazy very fast so I'm gonna pause the sim and just scrub through so you can see how it's looking Oh, I love this plume up here so this is what the motion velocity is doing you can see it sort of keeps going and going toward the wall and it's even swirling a little bit on its own so that's pretty cool and then the can keeps falling down and you can just keep running the sim forward and then you know of course you can just sort of put the camera in place hit control C don't forget to enable motion blur in the camera settings and you can create some lights and render it out if you don't know how to render things out, be sure to watch the previous Dragon Destruction tutorial where I told you guys what my rendering setup was. I don't want to go over it in every single video because I feel like it's going to get repetitive very quickly. But just wanted to share the physics simulation with Typhlo and the smoke simulation with Phoenix. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It would be great if you could subscribe if you like these kinds of tutorials. I'm going to be making more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.